Ranjan JCP Data Engineering. In this video, we will see how we can write cloud functions against BigQuery events. Okay, so let us go to the demo slide. So in this video, we will see a particular use case where, for example, there is a table in the BigQuery data set and the table is getting refreshed, but we don't know the exact time, right, when the table is getting refreshed right so in such use cases this particular ar architecture that is event driven architecture is very much useful so whenever that event or the table refreshes event happening right then we are going to trigger a cloud function so we'll write the cloud function in python so this will basically extract the data from the table and it it will it will write the data into google cloud storage bucket in the csv format so this is the use case, right? In our previous video, we, was, we have seen for the Google Cloud Storage events, we, we have tried to extract the data from the Google Cloud Storage and uh, we have written the data into BigQuery. So this is vice versa, it's a reverse actually. So for a BigQuery event, we'll try to extract the data from the BigQuery data set and table and then we'll write the data into Google Cloud Storage, okay? Now let us quickly go to the demo and we'll see. Uh, now I'm into my Google Cloud function console page. So here we'll try to create the function. So for this demo, I'm using Gen2, generation two. Okay, let us name this BQ to GCS. So let us keep the region as it is, uh, then uh, this gen2 functions right generation 2 functions use this particular framework right so event arc trigger framework a tool where it will basically uh, supports so many events uh, it includes so many google cloud uh, services including bigquery so pubsub so we'll see that right uh, in in upcoming uh, video or demo okay so let us click on this particular uh, this button right so here you can see the event providers we have almost every google cloud service available over here so we'll try to use bigquery so we'll try to write our cloud function again against the bigquery events so in the bigquery also we do have so many uh, uh, events it will support right so but we are uh, interested in uh, insert job event okay so how it will work i will explain you right basically whenever that particular event happening in the bigquery you know right how this cloud logging will work for every activity we are doing in the google cloud platform there will be a log available in the cloud logging module like this right so so whenever you do some bigquery operations or uh, compute engine operations right or data flow operations so you can see that related logs over here to this so this particular process will work whenever there is some log exported to the logging module, then that e that particular event will be triggered. Then uh, whatever the code we have written in the cloud function. So according to that code, that basically the task will be performed. So in this particular demo, we are trying to extract the data from BigQuery table and we are trying to write the data into Google Cloud Storage bucket. So that means, so we have basically we are also specifying a resource also because we don't want to execute our function every event uh, that is related to this job service input if you have multiple data sets and multiple uh, tables right so whenever you are trying to perform this refresh or dml operations on any of the table this event will be triggered but we would like to restrict this event by using the extra filters where you will try to specify the particular resource name right let us go to the bigquery so we are interested in this particular table so if there are some refresh happening if there is some refresh happening on this table and also if someone is manually updating this table then only i would like to execute my function to extract the data from this table and write the data into gcs packet so that's where i would like to specify this resource name over here to restrict our cloud function execution 
to only particular table. Okay. For that, we will have to specify the resource name like this. Okay. Let us go to the naming convention. We will have to specify our resource name over here. So, that our function will be get executed whenever this particular event happening on this table. Okay. Now, uh, the reason is this and uh, basically this event framework uses this service account that is compute engine default service account. Let us save this trigger right you can see. So, event provider is BigQuery event type anyway through cloud logging whenever you try to write some data into the table or refresh the table and then this is the event type job service insert job ok. Right now we will have to select our execution environment or compute. So, 256 MB 60 second timeout and uh, ok this uses default compute engine service account. So, let us select the maximum workers to 2 then click on next. So, our runtime environment is python we will have to select python 3.0 ok. Now, in the main py I will I have already written that code I will try to explain you and also in requirement file if there are some dependencies which are being used by this program then we will have to specify those dependencies. Let us go to the code ok and then I will try to explain that code. So, these are the dependencies inside this code we are using all these packages ok BigQuery and to read or write some data into Google Cloud Storage, we'll, we are using this particular library. So, that is why we will have to install that. Okay. Now, let us go to this program. So, this is a simple program for, for this event that means BigQuery table update or refresh event. So, we are going to write this logic. So, you can see we, we have created the BigQuery client and uh, we are trying to extract the data using this BigQuery client by uh, passing this select query as an input argument. Select star from project and data set table name. You can see this is the table name, uh, this is a data set and this is a project name. right? So, it will just try to extract uh, the complete table right? and then it will try to write the data into this GCS bucket. Okay? You can see this is the bucket name which I have already created okay? and this is the file name. So, for every extraction I would like to append the timestamp. So, I am just deriving this timestamp over here in, in string format. Okay. So, I am trying to write the data into in a CSV file actually dot CSV. Okay. Simple program. So, extract the data using this SQL query and uh, convert it into a data frame and write the data into CSV, fi CSV file by using this method to, S to CSV. Okay. So, this is available uh, in the data frame. Okay. So, simple let us try to copy this code okay. in the main py I can paste this code. Okay. In the requirement we will have to install all these packages otherwise it will throw an error. Okay. Now, deploy the function. It will take some time. Meanwhile, we will try to examine our Google Cloud storage. This is the destination location where our uh, data is uh, basically getting extracted over here. So, now you can see this is empty. So, this is our BigQuery table. Right now, it has few rows. right? So, while testing this function, what we can do? We will try to uh, update this table manually. right? So, and then uh, this particular event will log an event into that this logging module. Okay. Then our function will be get executed and it will try to extract the data into this bucket location. Okay. I think this function is getting installed sorry deploy so it will take some time. Now, you can see this function uh, uh, got deployed successfully. So, and also just try to notice over here this particular uh, service right this cloud function generation tool it internally uses cloud run for for basically uh, executing our program right. So, this is uh, another interesting service. So, we can discuss this later ok. Now, you can see go to our source this is our source trying to extract data from this table 
this is the data set and the project and uh, these are the dependencies now we will try to basically trigger that event so for that what we can do directly go to the bigquery and try to update this table so let me so update this table just i'm trying to update one of the column just providing by some filter so try to run this right now you can see one table got updated oh, sorry one row got updated now let us go to our function and logs so now we'll monitor the logs whether our function uh, has been triggered and it has extracted the data into see it has been triggered actually you can see it has been executed so let us examine our uh, bucket actually okay now you can see so it has extracted the data there are three files available uh, actually uh, look like there are uh, it has triggered three logs that way that's why uh, three log events i mean to say that's why you can see uh, there are three files uh, uh, basically exported to gcs bucket right this you can see this is this is the table data it has three rows we have updated this uh, this particular row first row to which it you can see uh, go to our bigquery that's where we have updated right name equal to hh that's where you can see this is the data so so this is a simple example and demo so basically where if there is a table getting refreshed you don't know the time when it's getting refreshed then you'll have to extract the data into this bucket so in such use cases you can use this particular architecture okay so for this video that's it thank you thank you very much for watching this video